Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged Plus. Now, heat is often described as the elephant in the room when it comes to how we decarbonize our lives. But at the moment, most people still use gas uh, to heat their homes and we all need an alternative because we're all going to have to change. And that is where Kenza Heat Pumps plays a vitally important role. And I'm joined by Darren from Kenza here today. Darren, can you explain, because this, I've seen one of these, we'll talk about that in a moment, the shoe box. Yeah. In, I've seen it in, 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 in situ, but I haven't seen this. This is the Evo. This, is this a new product for you? Absolutely. This is Kenza's latest product and um, it's been designed to uh, bring our product range um, into modern times, if you like. Um, it's been designed to go inside a property, whereas a lot of the heat pumps before have been uh, in a plant room. So they previously they've been quite noisy. Right. Um, and that's that type of thing with a heat pump. Um, what we've moved on to now is a far slicker unit, um, a nice touch screen controller. Um, it's far more efficient, has lots of benefits to the end user. It's designed to go in a kitchen. Um, you know, it could sit next to your dishwasher um, about a similar noise level as well. Right. As a dishwasher, it's not, that's not deafening, is it? A dishwasher is not too bad. No, no, that's right, <laughs> right. absolutely. And what, what we've done to, um, to make that happen is to basically build um, a floating shelf inside the unit with um, acoustic insulation all the way around it and that takes out all the noise and vibration that you would get with previous models of heat pumps. And, and, and there's the noise, uh, uh, I'm just trying to imagine where the noise is coming from, presumably that is the pump as it were, so the it's pump's actually driving. The, the noise is actually the compressor. Right. Yeah, so inside a heat pump we have a couple of components really, a, a couple of pumps, a ground side pump and a load side pump, um, and we can talk in a bit more depth about that later yeah. on, but we've got essentially a compressor, which right. is the noisy bit. And, that, and is it a similar overall idea to something you'd have in the back of a refrigerator is it that absolutely but, but yeah large? On, a, on a bigger scale we're yeah. not taking the heat out of the food no. and pushing it out the back of the little radiator on the back of a, um, a fridge we're essentially taking energy from the ground or water wherever it may be and transferring it into usable energy inside the heat pump and putting it into a distribution system right but now I notice it's considerably bigger than this so this I saw a house recently which was featured on fully charged with the shoebox fitted in yep that was at one individual home probably a three bedroom house so that is that sufficient for that size of property or okay from? yeah so um, the Evo range goes up to 17 kilowatt in single phase and um, we do make a 15 kilowatt three phase model um, but the shoebox is predominantly used in smaller properties we make the three kilowatt which is the one you have there and a six kilowatt which is a slightly bigger unit which is a twin of the right of the three um, the shoebox if it's in, I think the project you actually saw was, um, yeah, was using a six kilowatt. Right. And you can either put that in a small property like a bungalow or a flat and high rise flats, or it could be that you put multiples in. Right. You know, you might have one in a block of one in each flat in a block of flats. They're predominantly used on shared ground arrays. Right, right. That unit there, the smaller shoebox, is actually designed to go in a kitchen cupboard. Right. So it's still in the kitchen but actually could be fitted under the sink. So the other thing then is hot water. So can, it, can you also yeah. use it to heat your hot water for yeah, washing? Def yeah, absolutely. So um, if I just go back a step. So when we're running the system and we're pumping the fluid, thermal transfer fluid through the ground array, when it comes into the heat pump, it goes through um, our heat exchanger inside the heat pump and then we run it through a compressor. And basically the compressor is just squashing all that energy that we've got a lot of low grade energy in, in to, into, from the refrigerant into usable energy and it comes out the other side uh, through into another heat exchanger which we can then transfer that into radiators, underfloor, a hot water cylinder, right. wherever we want. Right. And we just control the temperatures based on how we set the yeah. controller up. And so you're taking, say the, the fluid is maybe what, eight to 11 degrees centigrade. What, yeah. what temperatures can you get out of it then? Yeah, okay. So we typically, if we say we came in at 12 degrees from the ground, We'd use four of those degrees to boil the liquid refrigerant within the refrigerant circuit that runs in the middle of the heat pump, if you like. Um, that turns from a liquid into a gas. We then compress that gas and it comes out the other side at 70 degrees. Wow, that is okay. amazing. And then we use that energy um, through another heat exchanger that transfers into the water that goes then back into the radiators or right. the cylinder yeah. or the underfloor, right. wherever right. it may be. 
Yeah. And what about sort of I don't know is there is there any application with things like waste heat in, from industrial processes or you there's, know? absolutely there's there's loads of things that are um, people are becoming more and more aware of that you can use lots of waste heat. Um, from server rooms and places like that but of course yes, yeah yeah there's there's heat that's needed to be taken away a lot in a lot of places yeah. and uh, use, being able to use a ground source heat pump is a great way of having that utilized and then at the same time charging the ground right. because when you use a heat pump to, for cooling if you like um, you're essentially just spinning it around with a set of valves so instead of putting the heat in to the radius you're actually taking the heat out of the property and then putting it in into the ground so right. a heat pump can be used in lots of Right, because I suppose applications. that's the other thing is is cooling. I mean, uh, you know, because that's going to become probably quite yeah. an important issue in yeah. our lives over the next few years. Yeah, but it's a big issue now. I think. Right. It's yeah. A lot so of. Um, can it be used to cool a property as well as heating? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. There's lots of different methods. Um, the simplest method really is um, passive cooling, where we would just carry the ground array on into the house, if you like, and maybe connect to a fan core unit. For a typical sort of domestic property that might have a nice, nicely heated conservatory or something that just gets too hot, um, nice little fan coil in there connected to the ground side. Um, and we can just pump that cooler temperature so through there. Right. We're actually, it's, it's like comfort cooling. Yeah. We're lowering the temperature of the room. So it's not like a full on air conditioning unit, no. but it would just lower the temperature. Yeah, it would lower the over. temperature. Um, and at the same time, you're benefiting because you're actually charging the ground back up. Right, so you're recharging you're the that, ground. You're effectively, you're putting more heat back yeah. into the ground. One of the advantages, I'm assuming, and this is probably because I'm a perpetual optimist, <laughs> is that this is cheaper to run than a, than a gas boiler that could produce the equivalent amount of heat. Am I way out of line there? Is that right? Or um, I, I would say typically it's in, in parity with gas. Um, I think the, the benefits of running a heat pump are um, if you use variable tariffs and if you look at um, when you can buy electricity cheap um, at the cheapest possible time, then you can make your system a lot cheaper to run than gas right. with a heat pump. So what is obvious, Darren, is that for a start, this is a, a, a huge reduction, I'm assuming, in, in carbon output you know, in comparison with a gas boiler. And if you think of that in nationwide terms or globally, it's a phenomenal difference. But do you, how do you see that going into the future, the sort of this, the role of heat pumps in, in decarbonising our, yeah, our the, lives. So the way Kenza see the future is putting the infrastructure in the ground and then just have a heat pump come online whenever it feels free to tap in. Right. Rather than distress buying of gas boilers, all my boilers gone, I'll go and replace it. It's the cheapest option, which is we see quite a bit of. Um, if there was a, an available source for them to take from the street that they could connect into, fantastic. It's, yeah. It's as simple as installing a gas boiler. Anyone who can install a gas boiler can install a heat Right. Pump. So actually the installation is, is plumbing. It's fairly yeah. basic plumbing. It's not some super high tech thing. I think one of the benefits of a decent gas installer, if they've been used to sizing their systems to run at 55 for a condensing system, and if they're familiar with that technology and that the way they need to oversize their, system, their radiators uh, to run it to condense at 55, when they understand that, then they'll get the principle of heat pumps and they can run it at a lower temperature again. Thank you.